I'm going to make this absolutely clear. I know absolutely nothing about Bubble Guppies. All I know about it is that it's a show on Nick Jr. There's some diverse mermaid fish school children, and a bigger orange goldfish man named Mr. Gruber. That's all I can really say. Seems like a good kids show, however. I consider showing it to some of my kids at some point, but I don't know when. Sometimes I get really bored and go on these weird websites with a bunch of games on them that they probably didn't ask the developers if they could be included. I still play them. I don't only play games like that. I obviously download the actual games from an actual source. I just go there for fun from time to time. One day I went on one of those websites, game-game.com, to play this dumbass bootleg clone of Kick the Buddy. Off to the side, I saw a game being advertised with an image of Mr. Grouper from Bubble Guppies. Strangely, he was accompanied with a purple version of himself, with poorly edited on angry eyebrows over the purple one. The background was a stock underwater cartoon background image. After hovering my mouse over the game icon, I saw the game was titled Bubbing Guppers. Though on the front page of Games for Kids on this site, a game titled Wodoku would always be there, with a bunch of random other random ass games. Today it was replaced with this. I clicked, because I thought the sheer bootleg aura this gave off was genuinely hilarious, and I needed to see how the game would play out. The first thing I saw when clicking on the page was that it apparently had 4.5 stars. Scrolled down, and I saw an alternative game icon with the same background, stock images, and Mr. Grouper alongside his evil twin. I pressed play, and the actual title card appeared. A stock image of the Bubble Guppies and Mr. Grouper standing in frame, with the words, Bubble Guppy, Adventure of Mr. Grouper, and various buttons that looked very different from each other. Play, options, and sad. Pressing the options button lets you set the controls and lets you, and I quote, flingle the spingle, which does nothing. The sad button made the music cut out for some seconds before an edit of the characters on the title screen with their smiles flipped upside down appeared, before immediately reverting back to normal as the music cut back in. The play button doesn't need to be explained. I pressed play and the game opened up. I was met with what seemed to be some kind of exposition scene. It had text, and images were shown along with the text. One day, while Bub Obel Guppies were happy and everything was good, along with a regular Bubble Guppies stock image featuring all the characters. But then, all of a sudden, Mr. Groper's evil twin named Sir Repwarg kidnap all Bubble Gups and image is Mr. Grouper in the corner with the smile edited to be a frown. The previously mentioned Sir Repwarg, literally just Mr. Grouper but purple with angry eyebrows and an evil smile. All of the Bubble Guppies with edited frowns on Repwarg's side with ropes tied around all of them. No, not all of them individually. All of them were tied together with one big rope. Background is a random background from the show. Now, Mr. Grip Oper must go on a mission to save the Bubble Guppies from the evil grab of Sir Rapport. Once the game finally began, we were in a random free-to-use underwater backdrop that looped very poorly. The enemies are stock images of sharks and hue-shifted Koopas. It has very poorly made platforming segments, and the background music is some random-ass EDM song. The worst part about it is that it's annoying to listen to, and the sound of the EDM music was seconds 
more particularly, seven seconds of the drop. And the loop was very offbeat. I genuinely had to take my headphones off and put some replacement music on my phone to listen to instead. There were spikes. Wooden spikes. They had the white blocks around them that anybody with any knowledge on poor Photoshop would know that they found a random stock image and poorly cut out the wooden spikes. The hitboxes were abhorrently abysmal. The worst part about the Koopas was that, from the way they cut out the Koopa, there was a random, hard-to-see black shape from the rest of the image it was cut from. Meaning that any time you see a Koopa, there's a chance you'll die to something that looks as if it merges with the background. Mr. Grouper's hitboxes were also horrible. Even if you found a way you could avoid the weird shape, the hitbox could still fuck you over. The overview of the game was what you would expect. Underwater background from before, but purple. Certain points, similar to the Cuphead overworld, or the level select screen from the new Super Mario Bros. games. You could under you could stand on signified new worlds, and they were locked if you haven't beaten the level before. The first level was literally just called First Level. I've already explained it. The second level, titled Erupt Fire Volcano Lava, was the same level but with poorly made power-ups. You would kill an enemy, and they would spawn a random power-up. They were all differently colored projectiles you could shoot, or just health boosts. The enemies in this level were differently colored stock images of skulls with angry eyebrows edited on. The third level, titled Bossing Fight Reporg, does not need to be explained. It's some kind of boss fight against the weird purple, evil Mr. Gerber guy. But the way it plays out is exactly why I had to post this. The level starts off with a distorted underwater background, probably from the show. The whole level just has an annoyingly short clip from the theme song. I guess I wouldn't mind if it was just the whole theme song, but it's just the roll call part where everybody says their names. The cutoff is offbeat. There's nothing in the level, just a blank background that doesn't move with the player for some reason. However, I, in the middle of walking, saw something above Mr. Grouper before the screen cuts to black. After some seconds, it cuts to it cuts back. And the thing from above is now obvious. Gil's corpse, foaming at the mouth floating in the water. His corpse was doing the thing actual dead fish do, where they just float upwards. The Mr. Grouper sprite has been edited, with his pupils shrunken and looking up, his mouth removed, and tears welling up in his eyes. The music in the background was a shit ton of stock screams layered over each other. The whole level was still just moving to the left. As you move to the left, the rest of the Bubble Guppies' dead bodies come into frame. All of them, dead. The more you move to the left, the more the screaming audio grows in volume. But it immediately cuts to silence once you reach the end. Where somebody's waiting for you. Sir Repor, standing there, staring directly at Mr. Grouper. Shitty edited angry eyebrows and all. However, once a cutscene starts, he ends up looking genuinely fucking horrifying. By this point, I had put my computer into full screen because I was invested now. How does it feel to fail? Appeared in white text at the bottom of the black screen. In the middle was Sir Report. His eyes fused to his mouth, lines going up and down and each one of his pupils. An impossibly big grin, black stains on his eyes, and strange black liquid around them. The screen stays on this image for a long amount of time, before cutting to Mr. Grouper. His facial expression is the same from the previous level, except he has a mouth, which is slightly agape. 
Sir Raporg speaks again. Oh, what's the matter, brother? Finally noticing me? Noticing me like you never did? I hope you know this is your fault. They are dead because of you ignoring me. You indirectly killed them. You killed them. Mr. Grouper responds. What have you done? Sir Raporg speaks again. What have I done? If it weren't for you and Mother ignoring me. You sick fuck. Mr. Grouper yells. They were children. Fucking kids. You murdered fucking children because you got ignored as a kid? If you wanted me to help you out or to make amends, you could have fucking reached me for help. You're my brother. I never hated you. We were fucking brothers. You know I only picked on you as a joke, you asshole. I hate you. I... Grouper got on the ground and started sobbing, before suddenly swimming back up. You took away the people who mattered the most to me. You bastard. You son of a bitch. And there it is. The people who mattered the most to you. I knew you never viewed me as important. I knew I never mattered. Will you stand up a fight? Or will you perish like a dog? Two options appeared on screen next to the traumatized Mr. Grouper. The first one read, Fight! And the second one read, Give up. Here are the events that happen depending on the actions. If you pick fight, you enter a boss fight. I'm gonna fucking murder you, you rat bastard. I would love to see you try. The first thing that I noticed was that... What had happened to Mr. Grouper? His face was open, revealing a dark pit that cracked the rest of him open. In the middle of this pit, the words hate could be faintly seen. He also had a fucking pocket knife? Mr. Grouper from Bubble Guppies with a fucking pocket knife. The actual boss fight itself was interesting. The background looked darkened, almost rotted in my opinion. Sir Rapork, who had no eyes, nor any sockets for some reason, was throwing eyeballs that you had to dodge like bullets, and arms that flew at you like homing missiles, which you stabbed at to make them disappear. Stabbing was the space button. The boss fight's music was two repeated notes from a MIDI software with a repeated aim and break sample looping. If you lost, you got a screen with an image of Mr. Grouper, now back to normal, fucking dead, with his eyes almost rolled to the back of his head. Sir Raporg says, I have more respect for you than I ever had. Goodbye. If you won, this is what played out. Sir Raporg is standing there with a knife plunged into his gills. Mr. Grouper is back to normal, with a face filled with pure hatred. Sir Raporg, coughing up blood, spews one final sentence out. I knew you always hated me. He dies there, the eyes in his skull suddenly disappearing, leaving black sockets in his place. Mr. Grouper simply floats off screen with a face that looks very traumatized. Reasonably traumatized. The screen cut to a scene with Mr. Grouper still covered in purple blood, standing in the empty, darkened cafeteria from the show. Text is above in white that reads, You won, probably. Giving up results in Mr. Grouper stabbing himself, dying instantly. Sir Raporg swims off screen. After the game's end, you are taken to the title screen. If you give up or lose the boss fight, every character is missing. If you win, Mr. Grouper is now the only character there, his face gone. I don't really know what to say. What this reminds me of the most are those old Russian bootleg games. Like that one really fucked up Felix the Cat Russian bootleg with the disturbing game over screen. But also, when I went back to the place where the game originally was, it was gone. Wodoku now there like it usually is. The whole game was gone. I post this because I really want to find this game so I can play it again. It had way too much effort in it for some bootleg cash grab. So naturally I want to check it out again. Please contact me 
if you have any information. And that was Bubbing Guppers, written by Dibbing Sauce. Okay, review time. Now, this is definitely one of the better Bubble Guppies stories I've read. The last one that I read was Jack's Nightmare the Raping, and it was awful. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, because it's probably going to last an hour if I do. But I suggest checking out that uh, video where I narrated it, in case you're curious of what happens. But I digress. What did I think of this story? This was not bad at all. Not bad. It was, It had a few negatives, but overall, I really liked it. For starters, I really like how, instead of this being a lost episode, it's someone's shitty web game. And it would make sense for them to use Bubble Guppy's characters for something like this. Because it appeals to a little demographic. It appeals to kids. So I can see why Bubble Guppy's characters, out of all things, would be used for this. The overall descriptions of like the background music, what the levels looked like, the enemies, stuff like that. I liked those too, because it genuinely feels like something that I would find in, say, a Play Store app for some Mario clone. It's, it's Super Andrio World, you know? So that was cool, too. I also really like the visual representations of Mr. Grouper and Sir Reporg in the end. How... I think I'm, I think I'm starting to get this now. Sir Reporg's uh, eyeless face could represent his blind jealousy, while Mr. Grouper's, like, face covered in clumps of dark with the word hate in it, that could show his blind hatred. And I find that awesome. That is really good symbolism, Dibbing Sauce. I applaud you for that. However, here are where the negatives come in. Um, for starters, why is there a pocket knife? Like, out of all the things that Mr. Grouper could use to attack uh, Sir Reporg with, he used a pocket knife? Like, he couldn't just use, like, a projectile of some sort? Projectiles? Like a bullet hell game would? Something like Galaga? Like, that would make more sense than to pull out a realistic weapon. I get it, he's trying to deflect these things coming at him, but, like, you can use anything else and still make it work. Here, it just kind of makes it goofier than disturbing. And, uh... Hmm. Another thing I don't exactly get is Sir Reporg's face when he tells Mr. Grouper, how does it feel to fail? Why does his face look like that? Like, I can't really think of how that can symbolically represent something other than just to be there to look scary. That's pretty much all I can think of. Uh, no offense to you, Dibbing Sauce, you did an awesome job on this story, but I don't see how this can symbolically link back to something. Like, I guess his eyes kind of look like clocks, so maybe, like, it could show how much time has passed and how long he's been waiting to do this, but that's just my assumption. Overall, I don't really understand that part. But, yeah, those, those are pretty much the only two flaws I can think of. Overall, I will I will give this story a 8.5. It was very good. I had loads of fun reading it. But, uh... Yeah, some things could be fixed. Has its fair share of negatives, as usual with a lot of the, the stories that I read. 
Um, good job, Dibbing Sauce. I can't wait to see what else you come up with. But as always, this is simply my personal opinion. We all have our opinions regarding these pastas. What did you think of the pasta? What would you have done to improve upon it? And as always, I will see you all in the next narration. I love you all. Bless. Thank you.